Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Poddar. Now, there are many factors which are impacting the startup ecosystem currently. Expensive funds, lower valuations and also focus on the concept of profitability and the thrust by the investors. So, fundraising this year has been lower compared to the same period last year. How are we really poised for the next few months to come in terms of the new trends emerging in this particular space? Let's find out from two experts and investors joining me on Big Deal today. Let me welcome them on the show, Gopal Jain of Gaja Capital and Sasha Mirchandani of K Capital. Gentlemen, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Now, Sasha, before I uh, discuss uh, this entire sa startup ecosystem and the investment sentiment there, I want to first congr congratulate you for the latest fundraise that you've done uh, of over 750 crore rupees. Tell us more about this fundraising and the focus for this particular fund. Where are you going to deploy the funds? Because those companies will be making notes and lining up at your office now. Uh, first of all, thank you and thanks for the invite to your show, Nisha. Uh, we have closed a 767 crore fund, approximately $100 million. Uh, we were lucky that a whole bunch of our existing LPs, most of them came back in. And we've also got some new investors as well, which was a great nice mix to have for the fund. The fundraise went surprisingly smoothly considering the market environment. But I guess we've been around for, you know, 10 years plus, and that helped us a lot with our existing investors. And we're lucky to have the money now in this market. Uh, the focus, Nisha, we're a sector agnostic fund, but what we're seeing trends lines are in sectors like SaaS, you know, vertical SaaS, dev tools, et cetera. We're looking at SMB tech, we did an investment recently for a company called Tradle, along those lines. We're looking at fintech, lots of opportunities in fintech, and also lots of D2C opportunities. We've already made two investments, a company called Tradle and Foxtail from this fund. Both are direct consumer brands, and they've both gotten off to great starts. That's right. And also, Sasha, I want to understand, since we, you were on the road right now, while the environment was worsening, well, while, while various factors and macro environment changes were taking place and the valuations were dropping for the startup ecosystem across the world, what was the kind of feedback that you were getting from your investors? And were they worried? Was it difficult to raise funds? And on the other hand, what are the key worries from their end? They were clearly worried because if you see global markets, you know, tech has crashed. And then you look at India, tech has crashed as well. Because last year there was so much euphoria, there was so much money being put into tech companies uh, at the top of the market. And, you know, a lot of these people had also invested in these companies directly. And therefore, now they're one dollars worth fifty cents or whatever. So there was obviously a sense of worry, but most of these people are sophisticated investors. In fact, it's pretty much all our investors are sophisticated. They know we're investing for the long term. They believe in India as a country, and that's why they came after us. So I believe that yes, there were some concern areas, all valid, but I believe that this is the right time to invest, and we convince them that this is a good time. This vintage. You know, in venture capital, the vintage is when you invest is the most important. And we believe this vintage of 2022 and even in 2023 will be a perfect vintage for us. And we managed to convince them of the same. Hmm. And uh, we were lucky to get the capital for you. All right. Good to have. In a, you are in a good position to have cash at this point when so many could be really lining up. So, Gopal, uh, welcome to the discussion. Give me your sense on the investor mindset currently. What's happening on the ground and what are the key pressure points? Well, first of all, uh, congratulations, Sasha. Uh, it's a fundraise, a successful fundraise and in a tough environment. So, well done. Thank you, sir. And both Thank you. well, both for you and for the industry. Uh, uh, Nisha, uh, this is uh, a time in which uh, uh, you know price discoveries become uh, difficult for investors um, because both the economic and the financing outlook uh, for the economy in whole uh, and technology as well uh, has worsened over the last 12 months. Uh, this is particularly true in the global context. I think in the Indian context, we are uh, it's a slightly different picture. So let's start with the global context. You know, uh, economies have slowed down. Many economies have confirmed that they are staring at a recession next year. And within technology as well, you know, we've moved from a COVID uh, mode of existence to a more, more normal code of uh, mode of existence. Uh, in the US, uh, at its peak, e-commerce penetration had risen to 16.5%. It's down to 14.5%. So 
technology, which within the economy was growing and growing only in one direction, is also reverting to the mean. Uh, which is why I'm saying that for technology as well, the economic outlook has become a little less positive than what it was uh, some time back. In India, uh, you know, our asset prices are still strong because the economy is strong. But any investor which is plugged in the global economy is feeling uh, nervous right now. Yes. So people are expecting valuations, uh, uh, lower valuations, but uh, many companies are holding back. Um, those who have capital uh, are holding back. Some people, people are confused. Is this a passing shower or is this a, is this climate change? And uh, uh, as a result of which you have seen that uh, funding activity has significantly declined. That's right, uh, Gopal. But I want to understand from you, how do you see the valuation mismatch uh, going further? Because uh, some of the companies which raised funds some time back are going to run out of cash. They will have to come to the market again. And there will be a requirement of some sort of a solution, either a fundraise or an IPO, which looks like a less positive uh, you know, proposition at the moment for the startup ecosystem. So how do you see the valuation mismatch? Is that the biggest challenge currently? And what are those nuances that you are highlighting at the moment when anybody comes to you for investments? So, uh, you know, I do see things change over the next six to 12 months. I think um, as people become uh, more and more uh, resigned or start accepting that this is a new normal, first of all, uh, you know, while technology will grow, technology will not grow in a near vertical fashion. Secondly, uh, capital is no longer cheap uh, and capital may not become as cheap as it was a couple of years ago. It may take a long time for capital to become as cheap. And in a world where capital has some value, uh, profitability becomes important. Uh, so I think there is still a very strong market for uh, A-list companies. Uh, and I think A-list companies need not think about timing. Mm. There's, there's, a, there's a substantial amount of dry powder uh, within the venture capital private equity ecosystem. Uh, you know, investors like us continue to look for A-list companies and are still prepared to pay for growth. Uh, still, Technology is real. There's, that, there's no doubt about that. The only question is the trajectory. And secondly, the trajectory of companies, uh, earlier there were some companies that were not thinking of profitability at all. There are some companies that were thinking of profitability in three to five years. But in an environment where capital has value, profitability needs to become a nearer term pursuit. That's right. Path to profitability and having the concept of profitability is uh, very important and that I hope is getting incorporated. Uh, but Sasha, uh, at your stage, where uh, the stage at which you invest, what are the conversations? Is the venture capital community feeling the heat already? There are two parts to the answer, uh, Nisha. In the part that we play, which is the first check and, you know, seed and, and let's say seed, early series A, uh, there's only been a marginal correction uh, of valuations, not dramatic, as I was hoping. But what's happened to our advantage is that we're getting more time for diligence. That helps a lot versus the situation where we have to take decisions in two or three days. And therefore, last year, we pretty much stayed out of the market. We only made a few investments because we're not comfortable making investment decisions in two, three days. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know, but for us, it was wrong. However, as Gopal already said, in the growth stages, things have definitely slowed down. There's more time for diligence as well there. Valuations have come down to sensible levels. Uh, and what's happening is the flight to quality. The best companies are still raising capital. We are soon going to announce one more fundraise for a large fundraise one of our companies. And we had five or six term sheets for that company because it was almost profitable and growing in the right direction. And like I say, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is king. And we are, cash is taking center stage, Nisha. Right, cash is uh, definitely taking center stage and it is also becoming more expensive, Sasha, in the current environment. Uh, so, uh, valuation-wise, how are you seeing the dynamics at a very early stage uh, for a company? Because it is very difficult to value companies at that level when you're betting on new entrepreneurs. So what are the new aspects being incorporated in eligibility criteria in a much more tougher environment for assessing and betting your money there? 
you know, for what for what we do, it's pretty much the same because we're coming in so early. We can't talk to the entrepreneur, and ask him or her for a profit plan. We're coming in first check. But what we're seeing is in our own portfolio as the companies progress uh, and they raise larger rounds of capital, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 million dollars. That's when they need to be, you know, in front of investors with a proper plan of profitability is what I'm saying. And that's yeah. very important. You don't have to be profitable, but you've got to have a path to profitability. And a lot of the entrepreneurs in our portfolio have understood that not only have they raised the capital, but I see them raising capital even in 2023 in a tough market because they've made that, those changes in their businesses. It's not easy, right? Because last year we were asking these entrepreneurs to grow, 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 hyper growth. And now we're telling them to slow down and move to profitability on a dime. Not so simple, but the best founders realize that they've got to be flexible. And that's the trait we like, right? We believe founders who are flexible, open-minded, and persistent, especially in these uh, environments. And are willing to take hard decisions. Now, entrepreneurship is hard, as every founder listening to this will agree. And the, the founders willing to take hard decisions are the ones that are the most backable in this environment. That's right. And uh, Sasha, definitely the concept of profitability and path to profitability is now coming in. That's a big change, even at an early stage, as you mentioned. Uh, so that's a very, very big change in uh, the overall startup ecosystem. While a lot of companies earlier used to not talk about that or at least evade that particular question, even when they entered the public market. So that's a big change. But we will talk about um, the exit opportunities and make profits and returns out of the investments what are the op options left there and what are the key challenges and trends that are emerging in the startup ecosystem going forward stay tuned to big deal